Asmongold, what happened? Why nobody is excited for Cataclysm. Yeah, true. You know, at BlizzCon 2023, uh -oh. you could have heard a freaking pin drop in the room when Cataclysm Classic was... Okay, chat. I'm gonna... I'm Okay, let's, let's, let's roleplay this. I'm Blizzard. It's BlizzCon 2023. You guys are the audience. You post the emote, whatever, whatever you think. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Blizzard here. Today, we would like, at BlizzCon 2023, to announce... Classic Cataclysm. Boo. And the crowd goes wild. And the people love it. Let's go. Was announced. Jesus. Hold up. Okay, video's too quiet. I'm gonna crank it up. We'll continue into Cataclysm Classic in 2024. The classic journey started with you. Is that good? As a love letter to the wild community. No, it's not. How about... To be fair, this was not the announcement. Okay, hello, hello. How's this? Is everything lined up? This is probably perfect, right? My voice with the music audio, I just want to make sure it's all good. Okay, are we good? Uh, why didn't you join OTK? Because allegedly I said the N-word in 2018. Actually, 2017. Good question. Let's move on. And it had already allegedly. been announced and known, but yes, nobody gives a shit. She was very nice. She did a good job announcing it and doing everything. But yes, obviously, people are mainly excited about Classic. Let's continue. We asked what you wanted. You responded to mm -hmm. us, and we listened. No, I wasn't at I was BlizzCon personally. Out, I was at an event over that weekend. Jeez. So I don't know what it was oh, like there it in is. the room. God but damn. Judging from the Yo. recording. I'll hold up. Hold up. Hold up. How, how, how much is this? Event over One that second. weekend. Jeez. So I don't know what it was oh, like. Oh, there it is. Okay, this is this is four plate. Hold up. Okay, so listen, forty five times eight plus the bar is forty five. Four hundred and five pounds. Holy shit! Wow. That's actually that's actually pretty strong. I think back in the day, and he and by the way, he's he's probably natty. Nixium is they call him natty natty Nixium. Back when I was deadlifting this much, I think my biggest deadlift, my PR was like four. four 40 440 pretty much um i was ju I, what i'm trying to say is i was fucking juiced okay i was on fucking d-ball i was on testosterone i was on like a gram of testosterone and fucking d-ball okay when i was pumping 440 deadlift pr okay so hey that's pretty fucking strong good shit anyway hey listen uh stinker poo stinker i looked at your logs i see what's going on here i know what you're trying to do I don't like to permaban people without any warning, though. I know exactly what's going on. You can chill out and stop being a little fucking dickhead in my chat, or you can assimilate and be chill. It's up to you, okay? I know what's going on. I see you. I want you to know. I see you. You can chill, or you gotta go. It's up to you. You choose your fate. Let's fucking go. Let's play the video. Room. God just damn. Judging from it's up the to you, bitch. A lot of people right, really were not that excited, which is something, to be fair, that we all could have predicted. Cataclysm yeah. Classic... Yes, there is people out there that want to play it. Of course, there's people that want to. Nobody gives a shit. Like, wrong, Asmogold. Wrong, Asmogold. Cataclysm Classic is the best version of Classic WoW. In fact, the only reason people wanted Classic Vanilla, Classic TBC, Classic Wrath was because they knew we had to go through those versions first so we could get to the real prize, the real promised land, the Shambhala, so to speak, the holy grail of Classic WoW, which is Cataclysm. So, wrong. Wrong, 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 Asmogold. Wrong. Literally nobody gives a shit about Kata. I mean, I don't even know why they're doing it. I think that they're, like, I don't know. I think it's almost a mistake to do it. Literally everybody wants Classic Kata, and everybody is going to play it. Classic Kata is probably going to be one of the most popular games of all time. I play it. But the overwhelming majority of players have no interest in this version of World of Warcraft yeah. whatsoever. There's some right. hype, but compared to TBC, Wrath of the Lich King, and even Season of Discovery, mm -hmm. Cataclysm Classic just just doesn't really resonate with Dude, I, I'm not even kidding. I went to the grocery store today, and I'm walking to the grocery store picking up my, my food, my groceries. Listen to me. I overheard like eight different conversations, random strangers in the grocery store, people talking about classic cataclysm. Like grandmas, grandpas, the lady at the checkout aisle, the guy begging up the groceries, the guy pushing the cart, the guy at the fucking turnip aisle buying turnips. 
everyone is talking about this game with people and i know that for a lot of you guys you're probably sitting there wondering this is a weird thing time. because i actually have more nostalgia for cataclysm than like any other expansion it's kind of one of the reasons why i haven't done and Nari, yo, thank yet, you is thank because you. it's such a big thing that i want to make sure that i do it the right way and i'm worried about doing it wrong like because you have to think what was my favorite expansion? Oh, it's not even close. It's classic Cataclysm. Like, Cataclysm came out whenever I was, like, first starting college. Like, I first had, like, a ton of free time. I joined, like, a raiding guild again. Like, everything. Why? Because a lot of people watching this video right now, you probably never played Cataclysm back in the day. Oh, you I probably did. don't know why so many people for the longest time thought that Cataclysm was WoW's worst expansion. Now, in regards to not. content... Cataclysm, listen, if, if anyone ever says cataclysm is bad you know they are retarded or intentionally trying to be contrarian and controversial the people that say cataclysm are bad these are the people that say the beatles suck everyone knows the beatles are good you can't these are the people that say ew i don't like hamburgers the fuck hamburger is the best food a good hamburger is the best food these are the people that say i don't like i was gonna say women no women women are hot how can you not like, now this is sounding a different way. I'm going to move on from this. Anyway, Cataclysm is good. That's my point. Okay, listen to me. And everything that, you know, Cataclysm offered to us as an expansion, it seems cool. I mean, you got a big dragon blowing up the planet and stuff. It's got a good premise. It's got some Well, cool like I read the Day of the Dragon book in like ninth grade or something like that. So for me, I was equally as hyped about this as I was about Wrath, if you can believe that. Because I knew who Deathwing was. I knew that we were going to fight Deathwing eventually. And I knew Deathwing was like... Deathwing is one of the, is one of the OG, like, going back to Warcraft 2. Way more villains. fucking powerful than, than Arthas, right? Well, so I was super out, hyped Morgan, about this. Goblins, these... You guys know that all of the Nether Drakes in TBC are like miscegenation, miscegenation, freak of nature, fucking freak babies of Deathwing, right? Those are actually Deathwing's fucked up, freaky ass babies. Are the Netherwing Drakes in TBC? It's new true. areas, raids, and so on. But what was the reason people had for not liking Cataclysm back in the day? What and what is the reason why today? Why are so many people not interested in Cataclysm? Dude, you know the coolest thing that could have happened in, in Cata? This would have been so cool. Like, in in order to beat Deathwing, we had to go back and resurrect Gruul, the fucking Dragon Killer. We we resurrect we go back to outland resurrect gruel bring him through the portal and he and then he, and then he walks his ass up to deathwing and the fucking giga chad song is playing in the background that song is playing and then he, he walks up and he just fucking grabs deathwing by the neck he looks him in the eye he calls him a bitch and then he slaps him <laughs> Gruel the dragon killer. You know why he got that name? Because he is a dragon killer. Cataclysm classic, and that's what I'm hoping to answer today. Before because Cataclysm is really oh to thank this channel's that's sponsor, Zygor. It's World of Warcraft's ultimate add-on for leveling, gold making, achievement farming, pet collecting, mount collecting, you name it. it is Sod dead? Bro, Sod is the best version of WoW ever. There you guys are you, you got you guys that don't understand sod and kata are going to drive me insane these are the best versions of all it time. does everything check them out down in the description below. you guys are going to drive me nuts so i've got seven reasons why seven things that i have you know collected from my own thoughts and from my own mm. memories of the expansion because <laughs> i did play it back in the day seven things that I would say are the reasons why people are not really into Cataclysm Classic and why they're not that hyped for it. The first point, and this is probably okay. one of the weaker points, which is why I'm saying it first, but for some people out there, it might actually be one of the major reasons why they didn't like Cataclysm. Why? Why is that? But it's the fact that the expansion destroyed the world. That That's a massive fucking reason. What do you mean? It's huge. Yeah. Cataclysm was the end of the world as we know it. That it Okay, I'm gonna cut the shit. Um, yeah, like like this this I think for me is probably the single biggest reason why I don't like Kata. The shit is over. Every single memory that you had just built playing WoW for the last six years between 2004 and 2010 
all of those memories running around Elwyn Forest, running around Duratar, running around Ashen Vale, running around Desolus, all those memories, all the places you had explored and uncovered, guess what? Gone. And not only are they gone, they got replaced with worse zones, worse, soulless, sort of like, like, I like to use the word conveyor belt. I feel like when I'm questing in Cataclysm Zones, I'm on a conveyor belt. I'm not exploring and and want and finding my own path, and I'm not I'm not on an adventure. Okay, I'm on a conveyor belt, and I'm seeing what the game wants me to see. Look to the left. There's a quest. Look to the right. There's a quest. Look to the left. Here's another quest. And the zone is done. Every zone has its own linear story plot, and there's not a lot of exploration. There's not a lot of journey. There's not a lot of mystery or intrigue in the catazones. They're just very soulless, lifeless, very objective oriented. And I don't like that. It destroyed the nostalgia that people had for doing the old quests, going to the old world. Like that's a massive fucking reason. Now, I think that reason is much less of a problem now because we have classic, right? And we have classic era, so it's okay. It's not that big of a deal. But yes, people were massively attached to it. Not really. The world is very boring in vanilla. It's not about whether it was boring. It's about whether people were attached to it or not. And people were fucking attached to it. He had I actually went through in Cataclysm and I did every single new quest. Is it boring? I should move my camera so you guys can see Asmongold. Um, this is something that Classic WoW does that no other version of World of Warcraft does anywhere near as well. World of Warcraft Classic, Vanilla WoW, the way the world is formed, the layout, the quest objectives, so, 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 um, almost every aspect of the game is formed in a way that incentivizes team play, um, teamwork, grouping up, and working together with other players. You like To that end, what I'm trying to say is the Vanilla WoW world really incentivizes you to interact with other people. Cataclysm does not do that. Cataclysm replaces that human interaction with NPC dialogue-driven storylines. And so, yes, it, f it feels way less social, and a lot of people say, yeah, it's a bad thing. Because I farmed out all the achievements. And I genuinely <clears throat> think that the Cataclysm quests are infinitely better than the original quests. Wrong. Okay, that's wrong. They that's are just infinitely wrong. fucking better. That is wrong. They are amazing. That's wrong. But they wrong. weren't the original ones, and they weren't what people wanted. Remember? What he just said is so wrong when they first started playing the game or weren't, weren't what people did when they first started playing the game that's just the truth and it is a nostalgia reason but nostalgia is real and so much in love what he just said is so wrong it's in the line of like th okay things that are equally as wrong as what asmongold just said about vanilla wow questing jerking off in a church fucking your own sister killing civilians that's how wrong it is. That's how fucking wrong what he just said is. The premise of Cataclysm is Deathwing has popped out it's of so deep wrong. home. He's causing yeah, chaos, he's a real tsunamis, asshole. earthquakes, Nobody volcanic likes eruptions, and so on. And so Blizzard <laughs> got it in their mind of taking Kalimdor and the Eastern Kingdoms and completely revamping these old the zones. Thing. And so Kalimdor and the Eastern Kingdoms would because be Because let's be honest, some of the zones and the ways that you play Classic WoW suck. Like you go to Westfall and there's two quests and then all the trappers just instantly kill you if you run. It's awesome. That's the way it should be. Run away because they have a backstab. It's crazy. So you have to go all the way over to Loch Madon. Now, I think that as you play the game more, and this is something that's discovered with age and time and retrospective, is that those things in the game actually contributed to the genius and the brilliance of Classic WoW because it caused people to go out in the world and, you know, take an approach that they didn't necessarily like. But also, whenever I say something like that, that is something that is appealing to a small minority of players. And do you remember how I said in Wrath of the Lich King, Blizzard tried to attract an audience of people that didn't actually like the game? Well, mm. guess what happens? Well, whenever you make an MMO that plays like an MMO, well, then people don't like it because they're not MMO players. Dude, yesterday I saw a girl on Twitter complaining that retail doesn't have polyamorous representation. Those are the type of people like th this has been it's been, and now it's been like 18 years of this of 18 years of slow descent into this is what it is.
this person and this and this tweet had like a hundred likes. There were there were people unironically upset that Retail WoW does not have polyamory represented in the game. That you that there's that there's no po- did you see that Chris Ichi? that there's no polyamorous characters and that there's no polyamory you can't there's no polyamory toggle at the character creation screen. It's because they got pulled in Great. from Blizzard. So basically, Blizzard changed WoW to appeal to non-MMO journey enjoyers, and they turned it into kind of like a, uh, you know, like a much more streamlined experience. And the streamlined nature of it, I think, took away some of the magic. Brought up to sort of a modern standard of questing. Yeah. Have you played the quest line where you're forced to help the gay centaurs get married? Uh, I, so I played Dragonflight. I remember hearing about that. I played Dragonflight for like a month when it came out. I probably did that quest. I probably I probably did help those gay centaurs uh, fuck each other. But uh, I don't. I never read the quest text, so I probably did it, but I didn't even notice because I didn't even read it. Right. A uh, modern content. standard. I don't know. There you so go. Probably. And so forth. Zones were going to be reworked. Quest lines were going to change. Memorable characters were going to be forgotten. New characters were going to be added. You know, Kalimdor and Eastern Kingdoms, like the OG, like two continents from Classic WoW, yeah. are kind of like sacred to the World of Warcraft player. And that although is it true. was it's exciting the original at first to this idea of Deathwing sundering the world and, you know, creating all this change across the two continents. And this is another thing. I know. I know in the post Deathwing Cataclysm world, the world is supposed to be fucked up, destroyed, in strife, chaos, fire, the ground is earthquakes, shattering. I, I I understand that's the lore, that's the theme of the expansion. It's not fun to be in those zones. Being running around those zones, it's like having an and fucking anxiety attack. The zones stopped being cozy. Because everywhere you everywhere you look in the world, everything is in chaos and strife and people are on fire and the ground is jagged and fucked up and it's not cozy or relaxing to be in the Cataclysm zones. The Vanilla WoW zones? Oh my dude, fuck, hold up. This is the Vanilla WoW zones. They had this, and they ruined it. They were given this and they put it in a fucking blender and ruined it. Everyone was excited for that back in the day, myself included. Yeah. I mean, come on. But once it was, you know, like once this idea was experienced for the first time, the second time, the third time, you know, leveling up alts and stuff, it quickly felt like a downgrade. And we're going to come back. I actually would disagree with that. I actually think that in a massive way, the new quests were better. And I think they were better in, like, every way. Yeah, I, I really think the new quests are better in every way. I think that it just... The thing is that whenever Cataclysm came out, this was the end of 2010. The game had already been out for five years, and people had already made an attachment to the world in a certain way. That's true. I think it yeah. was really nostalgia. To this. It's both. I disagree with him fundamentally. I think the, vanil the Vanilla Wild Zones genuinely... The vanilla WoW zone design and the quest design of the zones therein are both genuinely better. And also there's nostalgia to both, I think. But it it's felt like the world yeah, no, that it. we knew and that we loved had just <laughs> been broken. It was, not yeah, broken exactly. broken from like a lore perspective, like broken by Deathwing. Yeah. Like it was my broken in that what bit. was special about a it, bit. the memorable okay. characters and the quest lines and the things that made us fall in love with well, Azeroth. It was also like people had built up knowledge of like how to quest and how to level in WoW. And all of that knowledge just got reset and invalidated. And that's like another factor is that, you know, players experience and information about the game is now all deleted. That had been destroyed and it had been replaced with very linear quests. Very Someone said name on memorable character linear that was removed with Kata. Oh, Blanche. Like, that was easy. Simple characters and a leveling system that really was just designed to get you to level cap as quickly as possible. This was the time right. when Blizzard was sort of changing things up. They were removing group quests from the level up content. They See, that's what the problem was right there. And like, this is what I'm saying is that, like, while I think that the quests are so, like, I think people can, like, I think this argument that I'm making is like extremely confusing because I'm saying two seemingly conflicting things. I think that for what they are, the Cataclysm quests were better 
and the questing experience was better as a game. But I think that for creating an MMO environment, the original vanilla WoW quests were better. Is that weird to say? I'm not going to capitulate on this. I really, really think the very linear story progression narrative type of questing that Cataclysm introduced to the game sucks. I think it just fucking sucks. That like the Cataclysm quests on paper and by every definition are better, but the quests in original Vanilla WoW, the way their imperfectness created a perfect uh, harmony. It sounds stupid, but like that's what I think. Moving the necessity of needing to use maybe professions to like, uh no one likes dungeon oh, sorry, no one likes questing the eldest dungeon spam anyway. Okay. I'm gonna float an idea. You tell me what you think about this. I'm asking you. I think the reason why dungeon grinding has been the meta in Classic WoW for the last what five years is because it's way better. That's why. I don't I I actually don't think people have more fun doing it. I think they only do it because it's two, three times more XP per hour. So what I, what I think Blizzard should have done in 2019 is nerf the XP and I think they should have shut down dungeon grinding. They should have shut down dungeon grinding in some way. And I think people would have leveled more slowly. Yeah, sure. But also I think they would have had more fun. That's what I think. I think, I think people have more fun questing and being in the open world, but they feel like they're wasting their time by doing that because dungeon grinding is sometimes two, three times more efficient. So they feel like, oh man, I'm wasting my time. I think that's the big problem. Like how many of you guys, like back in the day, like, <clears throat> so for Path to Exile, how many of you guys benchmark yourself? How fast can I kill Brutus? How fast can I kill Katava or phase Katava? How fast can I kill Who? Malachi or uh, Vol over Soul or Who? something like that, right? Like you have like, yeah. okay, hey, I'm going to be able to Yo, kill dude. this boss this fast, right? To like benchmark your build, like while you're leveling. How many of you guys did that exact same fucking thing? in classic wow and like wrath whenever you're benchmarking a new character can i solo this quest can i solo that quest can i do this one by myself can i deal with this many mobs so like it gave a way for players to benchmark themselves and for good players to like for example like i went and i killed uh, like hogger and like vargash while i was leveling my warlock i did all that solo and it was really kind of fun because it was like ah, this is what i used to do right well, not yeah, necessity. Okay. It's not like you need professions in Classic yeah. WoW, but having, you know, alchemy and having those extra potions to help you when yeah. you're questing in the Barrens or you're doing that Agaman Mills family crypt quest line in Tears Fall Glades. But, you know, whatever. You can probably conjure up some examples in your head. You know, it was relevant. It was useful. It was handy to have those things. In Cataclysm, not so much. Everything was just kind of nerfed into the ground. Like I said, I'm going to come back to this point several times, but uh, Cataclysm really broke the world. It broke what was special about it. Let's Cataclysm turned the game from a world into a game. I think that's probably like, I, I think that makes sense. Maybe it doesn't. But that's what I think. Yeah, it turns it from a world to a game. Move on to the second thing, though. The second thing is that... The I, think, I think there is... I'm sure when I say this, you guys, you guys are all going to have examples in your own brain when I say this. There is an obsession, a fatal critical flaw with game developers feeling like they need to revolutionize and reinvent things to the point where things stop being good. It's like, it's like an expression of game developer hubris or ego or overconfidence. I'm going to revolutionize. I'm going to make this thing better. I'm going to, I'm going to design this thing so well in a way that no one because i'm a genius that that no one else has designed it this way and then what happens it's like it's like it's like it's like you give someone a wheel and they say yeah the wheel's pretty good it rolls okay i'm gonna make it better and then they start chipping away at it and before you know it you have a fucking triangle and it's like and then they look at this thing i made it's a triangle it's got three sides yeah but it's like actually worse for the task the, the, the wheel was better, right? The end game zones in Cataclysm from Vashir to Mount Hyjal to yeah. the Twilight Highlands, they were all disconnected. They and were. this is something that Blizzard learned from. Like this was an I actually didn't mind this. I, I like the new additions to the zones. I thought they were incredible. Like Vashir is one of the best zones ever made. Hyjal. Okay, bro, he has got to be trolling. Asmogold, you are trolling, bro. It was great. Deep Palm is amazing. Twilight Highlands fine. is okay. I don't really...
Twilight Highland sucks too. You have a shit about it that much. And Oldham is also, I guess, good. Oldham is a beautiful zone, but it is so... I remember out of all of the new Cataclysm zones, Oldham was the zone that hit me the hardest where it's like, I'm on a conveyor belt. I need, I need to go in the exact path at the exact pace and follow the exact storyboard progressive steps that this zone has me doing. Otherwise, I can't do it, right? Like Oldham is a really be just beautifully amazing zone that is just ruined by the quest uh, layout. Although it wasn't for me. They had never done this before, you know, in past expansions, TBC, Wrath of the Lich King, whenever a new expansion came out, there was a new continent. Yeah, that I didn't we got like to that. Explore and all I the liked in Cataclysm what they so did. And so forth. I loved it. Blizzard decided to do something different with Cataclysm, where they were going to have all the endgame zones mm -hmm. separated and be in different corners of the world. Yeah, I loved Ooh. it. And this was an interesting experiment, but Blizzard has never done anything like this since, because a lot of people did not not like this they didn't like how oh man you know if i want to go from twilight highlands to mount hyjal i gotta go through i these never portals. cared but i, I didn't have a job then. i gotta waste my hearthstone and go back to stormwind yeah. or grammar whatever it was annoying it was frustrating there was a lot of travel time between the i actually don't agree with this either to be honest with you and the reason why is because everybody had their hearth in stormwind yeah yeah, okay, here I agree with Asman. I feel like it, it's actually really easy to get around the world in Kata, and so this is like kind... Like, let me put this up. It's just as easy to get from Oldham to Twilight Highlands as it is to get from Negrand to Terracar Forest. Like, it, it actually is going to take just as much time. In 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 every case, also. So it, it kind of doesn't matter a whole lot, I think. And also, there were guild perks that allowed you to travel the world more easily, like Have Group Will Travel. And also, you never really had to go from Deep Home to <clears throat> Twilight Highlands regularly, except for like maybe the first few weeks of the expansion farming reputation. So you never really had to do these things functionally. And inside of Cataclysm, there was a portal area for Horde and for Alliance that would take you directly to every single zone. In my opinion, if you had to fly there yourself, I think it would have been better. Because it would have been more like these zones are part of the world. Different zones... Everything yeah, just felt tapes, disconnected. Yeah. It was Hearthstone just not pool. a... If you had to fly there on your own, this is what it would look like. You fly up in the air, and then you just hit auto-fly. And then you auto-fly to the new zone, and then you just go down. So it's not it's not really uh, that immersive, I don't think. Down, yeah. it, was a, you know, it was an okay idea. Now, there's nothing objectively wrong with mm -hmm. adding more zones into the game. I think yeah. it would be cool for Classic Plus down the road, for example, for Blizzard to add new zones into Classic right. Plus or finish zones <clears throat> that were just completely, well, n not completed. Like Deadly <laughs> like, Pass. Like Ajara or Silithus, for example. Yeah. But don't make these the end game zones. These should have been questing zones and the end game stuff should have been condensed into an area, a continent, an island, and so on and so forth. This I actually disagree with that too. I like the idea that the endgame zones are just right in the same area as the new zones. I think that it, it provides like a tremendous degree of scope and perspective in a game when you're going from like level 20 and level 5 and then you accidentally wander into like Deadwind Pass and you just have a bird chase you down with an unknown level and it kills you in one hit. Because it... This is something that is very true in Vanilla WoW, and I and I I like his point in that context. Is this something that really happened in Kata? Like, are are people leveling characters in Kata, and then they want they accidentally wander into a zone that's higher level, and they die? Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe a little bit. Creates like a sense of mystery, and it makes you realize like how small you are in the world. So I'm actually a very big advocate of making those zones that are just like these massive, super hard end game zones be right next door to Red Ridge. And they were. Look at Burning Steps. How many of you guys, whenever you started playing WoW, if you're vanilla, TBC, or Wrath player, what the hell's in there? Okay, just because I forget, if you're playing Kata and you're like level 18 and you're in Burning Steps, can you even wander into into this? Can can't? You, oh, sorry, you're in Red Ridge. Can you even wander into Burning Steps, or is there something like blocking you or stopping you? I want to go take a look because I forget. It's been so long. I forget. Let me go fly and see what's up.
Let me see. Because because right, in, in vanilla, you walk in and the imps uh, kill you. But in Kata, I, I don't know. I guess I just forget if this is something that really happened in Kata or not. This will take like two minutes, though. Let me see. Uh, portal, Stormwind. Can I find a nice uh, music? Uh, what the fuck? Yeah, this will do. Okay. Let's go see what's up. Let's go see. I'll be honest, man. Too loud. Shut up. I I think I've leveled up like maybe two characters in the last 15 years in the post cataclysm zones. I've leveled twice. And even then when you're leveling in the post cata zones, you level so quickly that you don't really even have to go to all of them. Like if if you if you don't like a zone, you just kind of don't go there. In vanilla WoW, you kind of you actually do have to go to every zone cuz they're cuz XP is so scarce pretty much. In Kata and then the subsequent versions, where XP is more, uh, um, there's more XP in it, and it's even faster to level. You, you, you really can just like go to one third or one half of the zones, and it's not a big deal. If you don't like the zone, just don't go there. Okay, so I'm gonna go take a look over here. Right. Oh yeah, I'm on my way. Remember in Vanilla WoW, there was a, uh, there was a fishing spot where you chat. What was the weird thing you would fish up? Peace Bloom. Do you guys know that? In Vanilla WoW, actually Vanilla, TBC, and Wrath, there was a fishing pool right here in the water, and if you fished it, you would get Peace Bloom. You just sit here, you sit here fishing up flowers all day. That's true. But this was like an inaccessible spot. You had to do a lot of like wall jumping to get there. You had to go, you had to go out of bounds to get to get up to that spot. There's the dragon. There's the fucking dragon. Sod is more dead than retail right now. You think so? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? I'm gonna go take a look at the mountain pass though. I'm gonna go see what this looks like. Let me see what's up here. Oh, is Cat out? Uh, Cat a pre-patch. I think Cat comes out in like a week. Uh, six days, maybe? Tomorrow I'm gonna be playing Sod. I'm doing a, a Sunken Temple speedrun tomorrow. In fact, tomorrow, actually, I need to uh, do some speedrun prep with you guys on stream. Yo, where the fuck is it? Okay, here it is, here it is, here it is. Where the hell is this? Black Rock Kodo. Black Rock War Kodo. Let me see. I I feel like I feel like the Cataclysm world is so forgettable. All of the mobs, all of the NPCs. And I think it's forgettable because there's just like no challenge. It's so um, easy. I feel like what what builds memories in your mind when you're leveling a character um, is dying or struggle or challenge. Okay, so it's kind of the same. So if you run in here, um, you're just gonna die. Black Rock Summoner, you run in and then you die to the imps. Okay, cool. Anyway, uh, let's keep playing the video here. 25, I mean, they're that small. What happens if we aggro them? And then they hit you and they run you down, you die. Yes, bro. I remember me and Zach did that. Like the first month we start, first started playing WoW. And we, we, I remember we swam off the shore of uh of westfall because like bro like we beat that one for us we beat westfall we basically ran the game at that point right we were like level 15 or so level level 17 mm -hmm. uh actually level 17 16 irl uh at the time as well uh and we just swim we're like well let's just swim this way and see where we go we ended up on zg island and there were like these level 63 trolls and it was like what the fuck bro like i think we're bad Bro, are, are we bad? Like, are, I think we're, we need to go back. We need to level. Yeah, I think we're bad. And so then it was like a totally different fucking reality check. Can I tell you guys a story that I, I don't, I don't think I've ever told this. This was, um, it must've been like, dude. Okay. So my wow account, I got wow. It was December 26th, 2004. It was the day after Christmas. Oh, four. So wow had been out for like a month at this point. Yeah, almost exactly a month, maybe five weeks. And my very first character ever was a male Night Elf Rogue that I leveled up to like level 12 or so, and then I rerolled, then I stopped. But that, my very first character I ever made was a male Night Elf Rogue with the spiky hair because it looked cool and I was like 11 years old. Anyway, I remember I got to level 12 and I took the boat to uh, Darkshore and I had grown up to that point playing Warcraft 2 and Warcraft 3 and like, I wanted to kill some horde. I was level 12. I like I 
I'm like, yo, where are the Horde? I want to kill Horde. This is World of Warcraft. Where are the Horde at? I haven't even... I haven't even... I haven't even seen an Orc yet. Okay, so I remember... I was level 12, and I actually uh, got, got like, four other people in a five-man group. We were all level 10, 11, 12, Night Elves. And I, I said, this was a PvP group. We are going to go kill Horde. And I got, like, four other people together with me. Keep in mind, it's December 2004. The game has been out for, like, five weeks. And I got, I got five people in a group, and we started running south. I had no idea where the Horde were, but I looked at the map, and we started running south. And we, the five of us made it. I'll never forget, we made it to the Zoram Strand around where Black Fathom Deeps is, and we're level 12. Every monster around there is, guess what, like level 20 or 21, 22, and we were just getting buttfucked over and over again by NPCs, and then the group disbanded, and I never saw Horde. And then, and then I rerolled, I decided, listen, I don't want to play Night Elf anymore, and then I made my gnome, my gnome mage. But that was my that was my failed horde raid. That was that was like one of the first adventures I had, similar to this. What he's just for how big the game was. Who was that? It Keith. Was Thank you, by the way. Thank you. This is a lesson that Blizzard learned from experience and from Cataclysm, and it Thank was a you. reason why a lot of people did not like the like the layout or the like the zone yeah, layout I, of the. I love the layout of Ashara, Ooh. or of Ashir. Is that it's just. A Mage, yeah, bro. I played a mage through vanilla, and then like the first maybe one third or half of TBC, I played a mage. And then there's another, there's a longer difference story. Remind me, I'll tell you later. There's a reason why I played warlock. I rerolled maybe halfway through TBC to play warlock, and that that has a whole story too. I'll tell you later if you want. It's out in the ocean, and you wouldn't even know that it's there unless you go underwater. It was actually probably one of the best zones they ever did, and I'll tell you guys why people don't like Ashara. Or Vashir. It's because whenever Cataclysm came out, Vashir's leveling was way slower than uh, uh, Hygel. So ever since then, everybody has just hated Vashir because it's a slower leveling zone. If it, I kind of agree. Like that, that's part of it. But also, I think people just hate underwater gameplay. For me, even if Vashir was faster than Hygel, notably faster than Hygel, still I wouldn't do it. Because fuck swimming. I hate I hate underwater shit. If it was a faster leveling zone than Hygel, people would have liked it. Game. Hate it. At end game. <laughs> if that makes it's sense. It's incredible. The third thing, and I'll keep this very brief, but in regards to Cataclysm, the lore was Also, also, speaking of lore, I'm gonna make a point on that. I feel like Hyjal was a mystery zone for a long time. There was a lot of mystique and intrigue about Mount Hyjal, right? In vanilla TBC Wrath, you have people that are able to, like, wall hack into the zone and explore it. It was a huge part of Warcraft 3, the Mount Hyjal stuff. And so I feel like ju just, just because of the lore, people said, man, I want to go see what's up there. I can actually go to Mount Hyjal now. I want to go see what the fuck is going on. Vajir, what the fuck is that? What is that? I don't even know what that is. And so, like, Hyjal had a reputation, right, that people wanted to go see what it's about. It was kind of confusing. Let me ask a question right now. Very simple question. He's right about this. What was Deathwing's plan in Cataclysm? He's like, mad. Bro, he's fucking mad. Like... He he pretty much just went on a retard rampage. Like, there's, no, there's really no other way to put that. Hey! Look at that mace! That's the two-handed mace from Deathwing at the end of the expansion. You couldn't have this during tier 11. That didn't come out for another two years. Oh That's my the normal God. mode version of the mace. Look this at video it right sucks. there. It's a different mace. No, no it's not. What? what was his, is it? his plan, you know, to bring him out? I think that's a two-handed mm. Deathwing, uh, Deathwing mace. The Hour of Twilight. Like, everybody knows it's that. It's a Shogal mace? No, but it's not. what was he doing to bring about the Hour of Twilight? What was he doing personally? The that was true. Nobody understood why the fuck Ragnaros came back. But everybody was happy because it was Ragnaros. The only thing that Deathwing does... Yeah, War Master Hold up. So, guys, are Ragnaros and Deathwing on the same team? Or were they, like, on different teams? I don't, I don't really know if they were boys. Yeah, they're boys. Okay. Yeah. If you okay. really think about it, it's is he pops out of deep home, yeah. and he sunders mm. the world, then he flies around and lights zones on mm -hmm. fire, and then he summons Ragnaros for in some the reason. whole Mount Hyjal area from yeah. the Firelands raid, if I remember correctly. 
And aside from that, that's pretty much it. He's just kind of flying around. It's just lighting zones on fire, just waiting yep. for his raid to come out. Yeah, where, you know, he flies up to Wormrest Accord, and then he got Thrall, and he blasts him with a giant golden dinner plate, and then we jump on his back and we kick his ass. Man. Which, like, theoretically should have been really cool. Like, the implementation of the Deathwing fight, Deathwing should have been the best fight in the history of WoW. I'm just forgetting. Um... Like the the problem is Deathwing is just too fucking big. Like like how how does your character who's this big fight a dragon that's fucking this big, right? Deathwing is too goddamn big. Because you know, it's been obviously a very long time. But looking back at Cataclysm, it just kind of seemed like the villains were there, and it was just we were kind of just hopping from raid to raid. But the the villains didn't really seem to have like a mm -hmm. like a plan or like a. Like a mm. well laid out, we're going to do this, 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 and this to bring about mm. this conclusion. It was just more like, here are the villains. They're trying to bring about the Hour of Twilight, whatever that means, and however that's done, and we got to stop them. But this yeah. was something in Wrath of the Lich King as well. Like, the lore was a bit confusing. The dungeons in Wrath, were good. Too. That's a video for another time. I oh, remember wow. talking to my friends about this even. I remember my uh, my friend uh, met, like, his wife in, in a random Halls of Origination uh, five man that we queued into. Wow. In that could have been your wife. That could have been your wife, Asmogold. Back in the day. Like, yeah. what's Deathwing doing? <laughs> like, lore-wise, you know, this is when I was really into World of Warcraft lore, personally, reading the books and reading the Shattering and stuff. Or I think maybe it was called The Sundering. I don't remember. It was the Warcraft book that came out at the time. Yeah. And um, I was just a bit confused, but maybe that's just a Yo, Smooth Eyes! Hey, thank you. Thank you. Friends at the time. Thank the you very much. why a lot of people did not like Cataclysm is because of how... Uh, why do people trying to care about lore? Okay, I I feel like lore is like maybe fifteen or twenty percent of what's important. No, probably probably like ten percent. Lore is for me at least is like ten percent of what I care about. Ninety percent I care about good gameplay. So if you have really really insane, is there a game that has like fucking awesome really cool lore, but the game sucks dick? You know what? Like maybe Warhammer Forty K is a good example. Warhammer Forty K has insane lore there's not like really any insane warhammer games that that are fucking awesome like like maybe mid at best so i like i would i would say warhammer has not been done right there hasn't been a game that has done warhammer uh you know like a, a, a good service right and so and so maybe yeah maybe kingdom come deliverance yeah maybe i would say that too kind of a little bit but so so in, so anyway the the reason I say this is because it's not enough to have good lore, because lore is only like 10% of what matters. If you have got great lore and a great game, then you've got a blockbuster AAA game. It's going to be awesome. Everyone's going to love it. But if you have great lore and a bad game, no one cares. If you have... Um, if, like to, to that point, I, th I think people will actually excuse bad lore. If you've got a great game with... chat, Are there examples of that? A great game with retarded lore that makes no sense. And people love it anyway because the gameplay is so good. Who cares? World of Warcraft. Let's talk. Look beyond beyond WoW. Give me a different example. OSRS. Yeah, yeah. Maybe OSRS. I don't think a lot of people really care about OSRS lore a whole lot. Dark Souls. I feel like I feel like Dark Souls lore is actually pretty cool. I think I think it's pretty good. Um, League. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe League of Legends is a good example of that. Yeah, I think I think you're probably right. Early game focused. Yeah. Anomalous, was. by the now, way. Thank you. Thank you. Like yeah, I played the game a lot, and so because I did all the achievements, I got all of the content out of Cataclysm that it had because of the way that I played the game. But in general, yeah, I think that's the case. Like me, like I'm an altaholic. I love leveling in World of Warcraft. It's my favorite part of the game. Like, this was I... the stupidest cinematic that Blizzard's ever done. It was even dumber than the Dragonflight one. I'm in a minority when I so say stupid. that. I know that most wow. people are really more focused this on the end game wow. and stuff. Wow. <laughs> but Cataclysm was mostly focused on the early game, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but here we go. The problem was that the early game experience... I'm just going to say this. I'm going to get in trouble. I don't... Fuck it. I don't care. I, I really believe this. I think it should be illegal for orcs to have babies. If you want to be an orc, that's fine. That's your prerogative. I really think, though, there should be some, like, program or something 
that should not allow orcs to have babies. I really think that some type of like government program or something. Quality experience I just don't like than orcs. what we had before. Now, some I don't people, like orcs. But you have to remember that whenever Cataclysm came out, that's what everybody was wanting. Mm. Everybody during Wrath of the Lich King was complaining about the problems that Cataclysm solved. Like Cataclysm and the revamping of the zones and everything was a response from the players. Or sorry, a response to the players. It's just that the players were wrong. Or they weren't necessarily wrong. Is that even true? Like, okay, I was young, so maybe I'm just like misremembering or something, guys. In 2009, was there a huge outcry from the players? Ah, these old zones suck. Ah, we want new leveling zones. Ah, 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 OG, Azeroth, Kalimdor, Eastern Kingdoms, they suck. We want new zones. I do not remember that at all. Like, like I, like, I, I never, I never even saw that one bit. But who knows? Maybe I was clueless. They just weren't the right audience for an MMO. Argue the contrary. They would say, "Oh no, the storytelling was better, and the quests were like you know better laid out and stuff." And you're right, but that's what made it boring. Once you've gone yeah. through Silver yep. Pine Forest yep. once or twice or three times, you know the story. Yeah. You've seen Garrosh call Sylvanas a bitch. Not anymore. You have they took it out. gone into Gilneas with the Forsaken and fought with them. You've yeah. seen, who was it, Godfrey when he shoots Sylvanas in the back of the oh, head? Yeah. You've seen that this was a good linear cinematic. story play out over and over and over whereas in classic wow you know what came before and this is i mean i can make a whole video on this mm -hmm. subject alone but you really had the idea of the story was not linear it just kind of took you wherever you wanted to go you it's made awesome. your yeah. own path you made your own adventure you weren't being led from quest to quest to quest and so the thing is is that cataclysm put all this focus on the early game and yet the early game felt like a downgrade from what we had before Vanilla WoW is the Dark Souls of MMOs. That is, if you really, if you really think about what I just said, you will realize how profound it is. It is actually so fucking true. Vanilla WoW is the Dark Souls of MMOs. True. And this, that is true. I think that, wow. like, again, at the time, people thought it was pretty good, and they were happy about this. And that's what I'm trying to, like, kind of talk about. Why? Be okay, you want to you want to have a series of reasons. Vanilla WoW is the Dark Souls of MMOs because it is incredibly unstructured. There's very little guidance, and you just have to brute force figure your way, figure out your way through the world. Nothing is nothing is um, on guide rails. There's no bumpers coming up guiding you, directing you. You literally just have to figure it out through trial and error. And then also, this is really the biggest point. Everyone says Dark Souls is really hard, and it's not. Everyone says Vanilla WoW is really hard, and it's not. So there you go. Those are two giant reasons. What about is that, like, at the time, people were very, very positive about these changes, and they thought the new quests were great. Here's an interesting mm. question. If World of Warcraft that came out in 2020, and, and 2004 had the Cataclysm quest zones, would it have been that good of an MMO? I actually think no. But I think the reason why people don't like them is primarily because of nostalgia but i actually think that the questing being bad in vanilla wow caused people to have to do different weird stuff like let me think of an example uh that works really well with this elden ring okay so with elden ring every single person that plays elden ring probably has a different story of how they approached killing margit because of how bad how hard of a boss it is margit is an is a tremendously hard boss Wait, hold up. Wait, wait, which one is Margit? I beat Elden Ring a long time ago. Which, so it's been like two years. Margit. Um, how do you how do you spell that one? This, hold up. This guy. This guy. Isn't this like the first boss? Yeah, yo, this is like the first boss. Dude, you just go in there and just fuck him up. This guy was not that hard, man. Like, okay, guys, how many times did I die on this boss? If you were here like two years ago, uh, I I died probably like like twenty times. 
was I a caster? This like the second or like maybe final one third of the game, I was caster. The definitely at this part, I was not playing caster though. No, I wasn't. Easy boss. Easy boss. <laughs> Hold up. You want to see what I did? Hold up. Can I chat? Who's the final boss? Uh, Melania. Hold up. Stay safe TV. Melania. Elden Ring. Okay, l look at this, look at this. This, look at my hair. I was in a boy band at this point. Okay, take a look at this. This, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it covered. You guys don't need to see that. Okay, this is how good Caster was back in the day. Watch this. And we're, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip in. Hold up, where does she go giga mode? Uh, yeah, okay, okay, watch this. This is what we did, watch. Okay. Watch. Here we go, this is it. This is it. Bye, bitch. That's right, bye, bitch. The double. Just, just fucking blast her. And then, and then hit her, hit her again. One more time. Do it again. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Easiest boss fight of all time. Okay, let's and go. And every single Easy. person will approach Elden Ring and go up against Margit because they follow the path of grace. They go up against Margit and they get fucking stomped, right? And mm -hmm. some people go and massively overlevel it. Some people just, like, spend five hours like you know learning the game and like fucking uh beating them with their current gear uh some people do summon some people look up a strategy and like get a plus nine weapon and then one shot market instead you know with like one attack with comet azer and like every single person has like a different perspective That's the one. and that open-ended way that you can approach the game <laughs> creates a way for a player to tell their own narrative in the game and have ownership of the success in the game Stay safe's woke days still crack me up. My woke days, yeah. So true, brother. So true. I used to be so woke. In a unique way. Yeah. And I think that Classic WoW gave players that same opportunity by providing, like, you know, insurmountable at the time challenges that if you're really, really fucking good, you can kill Margit and you just go right up there and you beat his ass. Absolutely you can. But the odds are you're not very good because you just started the game. So I think that's the thing. Freedom to choose, right? Classic WoW. Remember what I said before about, like, my favorite kinds of games, you know, PoE, Elden Ring, Dark Souls, Classic WoW. They are games that ask you to get to the number four, but they don't tell you that you have to do two plus two. These are the best type of games. Yep. These are the best types of games. And so the opposite of this are games like... Retail WoW, Final Fantasy XIV. Um, they, are, they are very, very structured. There's a lot of hand-holding to get to the final destination. Um, Lost Ark is another, is another one of these. There is a lot of hand-holding. You do 3 plus 1, 4 plus 0, 5 plus, plus negative 1, 5 minus 1, 6 minus 2. You can do anything that you want. 8 divided by 2, 12 divided by 3. doesn't matter. You, all you have to do is get to the number four. And I think that games that provide you an open-ended way to achieve goals give players more ownership of the success. Does that make sense? Yes. This is not yes. some... And I think this was not something that anybody... I want to keep in mind, this was not something that anybody really understood at the time whenever Cataclysm came out. Nobody really understood the context of, like, why the game was so good. Because... In a way, we had to have, like, cat I think I think people had to experience the opposite, right? Like, you you have to experience a couple rainy days in order to appreciate the sunny days, so to speak, to make a metaphor, right? And so, given the game had six years of being really fucking good, the game had never really been bad. And then and then when the game kind of started changing, getting bad, a lot of people would say, then you then you have the hindsight. You look back, you say, wow, things used to be really different, and they were way better originally cataclysm allowed us to realize what the problem was 
personal opinion that I have. I mean, it is a personal opinion, to be fair. But this was a genuine criticism that a lot of people had of Cataclysm back in the day. There was even the fact that the level up experience felt less satisfying because the world had been nerfed. It had Shadowlands wasn't so bad. You know what? Um, within how long? Uh, six years. Within six years, there will be people talking about Shadowlands Classic, not in a joking, facetious way. There will be people, unironically, genuinely asking or talking about Shadowlands Classic. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Had been made a lot easier. Massively easier. I mentioned earlier in the video, a lot that of the group quests were removed gone. almost all of the group content from the game. Yeah, I used to really take a lot of satisfaction out of leveling up a new character and figuring out. This video is so biased because he disliked Kata. He openly said they shouldn't do Kata. Okay, link me, link me a video that that is that is not biased. Find me any video ever in the history of videos that does not have some amount of bias. Do you think you're not biased? Am I? Are... So anyway, the point is, every single person has a bias. Every single person on this planet has a bias. You're right. You're right. He has a bias, but. That's that's part of humanity, I suppose. Everyone has a bias. Yep. Outweighs true. To solo group quests. Charles Danger to like Sigil a Fish. Dumb thing, but like, I really love that. There was still Thank some here much. and there. You can find some Charles. cataclysm, like the Durnhold quest line, where you you know do the Durnhold quest. But to be fair, you can solo all of that as a hunter. I remember oh, doing yeah, that back in the day. Yeah. Like Your dog isn't biased. My dog is biased. Do you want to see something? Look at this. My dog right here. As innocent and cute as she looks, my dog has a bias for stealing food that she's not supposed to eat and then shitting on the carpet. That's her bias. If she can do that, she will do that. She will steal food and then she will have diarrhea on the carpet. That's her bias. And I have to live with that every single day. There's still group content, but it's very few. Very it's few. very far between. The world is not challenging anymore. You're just no. kind of running through it. Even when it comes to talent points in Cataclysm, they removed most of the talent point, like, I, I don't know the word for it, like potentiality in the game. In, in World of Warcraft, Wrath of the Lich King, you've got, what, 70 talent points that you can... Wrath? Hmm. Chat, did Wrath have the best class design of any version of WoW? Listen, I'm not, I'm not, um, of course I have a bias, but I'm not that fucking biased. Vanilla WoW, quest design and talent trees had a lot of fucking issues a lot of problems i i'm not sure if i can say it bet that, that it was best wrath you like cata better okay well listen keep it keep in mind you got hey you guys have a bias you guys have just had two years of classic wrath and now you're logging into the bait you've been playing cata beta for two weeks and you're like oh wow it's all new and it's shiny it's so much better if you really think cat is better let's have the same conversation a year from now after you're burned out on cata in the same way that you're burned out on Wrath right now, right? Like you just got done doing that. And so and so you're very aware of the flaws and the problems of the Wrath talent trees. And maybe the flaws or problems of, of CATA design has not hit you yet, right? So hold that thought for a year and a half maybe, and let's come back to it. You can it. play with, I don't even remember off the top of my head. But the point is in Cataclysm, you have, whereas you would think that you would get 75 talent points, the level cap going from 80 to 85, no, Blizzard actually nerfed the whole talent system, and in Cataclysm, you're only going to have 41 talent points. You're only going to be getting a talent point every other level. So the leveling was faster, it was more linear, it was more boring, it was less rewarding, it was less engaging, and so- So here's really another fucking thing, is that y'all remember those stupid motherfuckers that you would see back in Wrath of the Lich King and you would inspect a Death Knight, and he'd have, uh, you know, his talent points would be 20 points, 20 points, 20 points? Because mm -hmm. players were just so fucking stupid, they didn't understand their talent builds? Or you'd say somebody who had every single point in the same tree. Well, mm. Blizzard made it in Cataclysm to where you had to actually select your capstone talent in order to select talents from another talent tree. And Meaning you're not allowed to be retarded anymore. I don't like that. If someone is retarded, they should be allowed to be retarded. And this was like kind of like a noob, uh, like a noob protection. But yep. it also made builds less interesting. It made making builds less interesting. It's true. Because it removed a lot of customization. 
That is true, brother. Like, even though there was all this emphasis put on, like, new the proof? early game oh, they were still to garbage. make it as great as possible for a new player coming into the game, it actually had the opposite effect. <laughs> like, yeah. the opposite effect occurred with Cataclysm, and people found the new early game, well, kind of boring. Very boring, in fact. I didn't mind Maybe it the first personally. time you go through it, it's fun. But yeah, after that exactly. first time, I'm telling you, it's dull. But, you know, some people feel that way about Classic WoW, too. So, to each their own. Maybe it's, like, an example of, like, uh, you know, again, like, Dark Souls 1 or Elden Ring. And, like, how open-ended the experience of playing the game is. And comparing it to Final Fantasy 16. Where, like, Final Fantasy 16 is, like, an incredible, amazing game... But it doesn't have a lot of replay value because it's very uniform and it's the same every single time. Why don't Japanese game designers let me think for myself? Why? You know what? Chinese too. Korean also. Why don't Asian game designers let me think for myself? Actually, hold up. What am I saying? Dark Souls is a fucking Japanese game. Oh man, now I look like a fucking retard. That's cool. Play it off. I'm just going to play the video. I'm moving on. Whereas with Elden Ring or Dark Souls, you can approach the game in a completely different way. The fifth point was the introduction of a lot of group finder content. This was something that really hurt the social element of the game during <laughs> Cataclysm's true, lifespan. And it was something of great controversy that still kind of exists to this day. You can find threads where people still talk about this on the forums and on YouTube videos and stuff. The introduction, or rather the making the game revolve very heavily around looking for group and later on looking for raid. And so people have a sour taste in their mouth when it comes to Cataclysm because of- Adding an automatic queue was a bad idea. I believe that you should be able to play with anybody on any server at any time in any way. <clears throat> Servers are a technical limitation and all they do is separate players and make the game worse. That being said, I do not think there should be any automated group finding. This here, what this guy just said, is the single most true thing ever. Very true. All of that is true. Players should be making their own it's groups true. and deciding who they true. play with and what they're going to do together all the time. Maybe for like holiday events, right? Like a, a hoon or something like that. Sure, it makes sense. Automated group finding because it's just like basically fun content. But actual challenge content? No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. It works great for Mythic Plus. It does. Exactly. Yeah, Mythic Plus effectively solved that problem. Disagree it makes a better experience. Yeah. Uh, group finder is bad. Hard disagree. Okay, let me explain why why I believe this, okay? What about choosing your faction? Dude, you know what they should do? When you are at the character creation screen, you should not be able to pick which class or race you play or faction. They should have some sort of like AI, like Harry Potter style sorting hat type of functionality where maybe you answer a couple personality questions. Like you take a little like 20 question personality quiz and it says, oh, you're a fucking piece of shit scumbag. You're going to play an undead rogue. Oh, you're a really nice guy. You're a really cool guy. You're going to play uh, a dwarf hunter. You're, you're great. They should so do that. The problem really and, is that... And, and you should not be able to go against that. You have to do that. Whenever a group finder is used, and it's an automated group finder, you now are at the mercy of the game selection choice. How many of you guys got groups sometimes in like the end of Wrath? that had two people with ICC 25 man heroic gear. And you just cleared the dungeon and it was like nothing ever happened. And how many of you guys also had some group with a guy that's using gear from like uh, Burning Steps and he's level 80 and he's tanking uh, Halls of Reflection. Okay, like he has no idea he's getting killed in like one hit. Uh, or, or like in Burning, or like yeah, in, in Cataclysm they still have gear from, uh, from Wrath of the Lich King questing. Right, because they just quested all the way through. And um, the problem is that whenever you have automated group content, you create an expectation uh, in the player's mind that the content will be easy and that they will be able to clear the content. And if the player is not able to clear the content because the group that they were assigned is bad, they won't play, they, they, will, they will blame the game because the game has effectively engineered a situation that wastes their time and... Do you think there are people that are too incompetent to clear LFR raids? Like, are there are there people that think LFR raids are too hard? 
oh man, I just can't. Oh, I've been queuing LFR all week. I just cannot beat this raid. Those people exist. And causes them to fail. And that's what ended up happening. And that's why they okay. ended up continuing to nerf the dungeons and Good. the raids that's in me. LFR and LFD. So that's the reason why I think you need to remove mm. automated group finding because it creates situations where the game engineers fail states. And I don't think the game should engineer fail states. There isn't a conversation on how to prepare. Yeah. Streaming at the city is not wasting time. No, I don't think you should have to do that either. I think that the current retail like bulletin board system that they have should be what the entire system is replaced by. And I would even be okay with for, for heroic and normal dungeons, especially in retail WoW, to teleport directly to them. Is that a good system overall? Yeah. I agree, but what's the alternative to being able to find players and pick at the same time? You just open up a group finder and you join a group. What's the problem? Why can't you just apply to a group and get invited or make your own group? Gatekeeping? Make your own group. If gatekeeping is this big of True. a problem, the people that complain about gatekeeping are nine times out of ten just trying to get carried. Those two things. That is it was totally like true. So like, oh, I've got you applied to the new raid. I have dreams. I'm getting gatekept. Blizzard. And it's actually worse than that. The people that complain about gatekeeping, I can't get into a group. It's people that have done the absolute bare minimum effort to make themselves a desirable group partner, meaning bad spec. I'm not even going to talk about logs or parses, bad logs and bad parses, but incorrect spec, no enchants on gear, terribly itemized gear. They, they, they are just like bad or lazy, low investment people. And the craziest thing about it is that they wouldn't ever play with people that are on their level. Like they, they have the expectation to play with people that are better or investing more time than they are. They would, if they had the option, they would never invite themselves. They would not ever invite someone like them to their raid. They would never fucking do it. They would only invite people better. And so it's like actually the most shameless dynamic of all time. Get the fuck out of here, pussy. Make your own group. Learn to fight. Get better gear. Stop trying to get carried. <clears throat> Gatekeeping. Get the fuck out of here. Began sort of the death of the MMO. I, I actually think that gatekeeping is a really good thing. Of course, you can take it too far, but ga gaming, um, gaming, video games, communities, various communities, countries, cultures, gatekeeping is a good thing. We need a certain amount of it. Not too much, maybe. But this idea that gatekeeping is unilaterally bad in every single case, nah, -uh. there's a, there's a, there are, there are totally normal and agreeable types of gates. Certain gates need to be kept, 100%. It's true. Like the whole it's massively true. multiplayer element. And it started to introduce this idea of being a mm -hmm. single player World of Warcraft player where you didn't need yeah. to get into a guild. Where oh you my God. Didn't I, I actually disagree with this too because this uh, Cataclysm was the first expansion that incentivized guilds more than any other expansion because they added levels and different rewards for being in a guild. And on top of that, I think... Well... It incentivized being in giant Zerg guilds. The guilds becoming so big, and how can I put this? Um, like the degree to which Cataclysm Guild uh, achievement and reward system was structured and incentivized it. It made people just numbers, man. Okay, we need seven hundred people online in our guild at all times. People stopped being people, and so it actually, it's like yes, it's incentivizing people to be in guilds, but you're removing those interpersonal inter relationships that you create in small, tight-knit guilds because now you just have a giant-ass Zerg guild to try to maximize your guild income revenue. It's, yeah, it's, it's like shifting from a small, locally-owned business guild to a giant, you know, corporation uh, guild, and you, you lose the soul of the guild in that process. So, yeah, there were more people in guilds, but the r interaction and relationship... Uh, went way down way down i think that playing classic wow the reason why it was extremely successful is because you could play the game solo and you didn't have to rely on other players in the same way that you did in older mmos like ultimate online or everquest so i think that the success of classic wow was also also keep in mind if you left a guild and then rejoin if you left guild a because you wanted to join guild b you had to start all the way over do you remember that like i think i think it was your guild reputation it bottomed out and you had to do it all over again. And so it made switching guilds really fucking bad. It was not good. It's primarily around the fact that 
grouping was heavily incentivized and it was massively rewarded, but it was not mandatory. And I think in Cataclysm, guilds were even more incentivized. To interact with people, you didn't need to go out and make friends in order to conquer the world. And people really did not like that. The six point, going back to the whole LFR thing. Yeah, it was also phasing. 10.2 the dragon soul raid Ooh. now for those that don't know the dragon soul 10.2 was 4.3 that patch patch 4.2 was the longest was lasting patch in world of warcraft history uh, seriously yes it was i remember i quit playing oh for like almost an entire it was a four i thought it was 4.3 uh because that's whenever the dungeons came out as well but i could be wrong uh either way wait 4.2. Yes, because, okay, so 4.0 was Cataclysm, 4.1 was ZG and ZA, 4.2 was uh, Firelands, and 4.3 was Hour of Twilight, which was the uh, the new five mans, and then also Dragon Soul. Yes, I was right. Um, anyway, does... So, so right now, that, so he's talking at the time, that was the longest patch. Later, patch 5.4 is the longest as of now. So this is Mists of Pandaria, and Warlords of Draenor still have had the longest single patch segments, with the former having a 399-day patch, patch 5.4. And then this is, uh, so that's that's Mop, and then Wad, patch 6.2 was 392 days. Oh my fucking god. Oh my god. 399 days. That is Doesn't nuts. matter. Uh, the point is that Clearly, uh, I, I forgot even what I was going to say. 4.2 lasted. Get this. Oh, I, yeah. I, how long the patch was. Yeah. The patch was a massive dead time. Massive, huge, long period of time where nobody was playing the game. Yeah. I didn't even remember it was this long. It lasted from November of 2011 until Myths of Pandaria was, was released 25th. in September yeah. of 2012. Yep. I remember doing the whole Hour of Twilight raid. I remember doing it on LFR, doing it on normal. This was the yeah. time when, for me personally, I really got deeper and deeper into role playing because there was nothing to do in World of Warcraft for months. The game was completely stagnant. Yeah. It was completely dead. Nothing was happening. The you know what's worse than a 399 day patch? Is a 399 day terrible patch when you're stuck with just terrible shit content. Raid had been raid, and so the 399 days happened in MOP, but still, this this Deathwing patch, what was it, um, 4.3, 4 I think, it was not not a good, not a good patch. Needed PVPers yeah. were bored. Not I had best in slot Yo, Mickey, gear. Thank I just you. basically quit. Thank you, thank you, dude. Yeah, I just pretty much stopped playing. Thing was going on, and people were pissed off about this. Cataclysm, you probably are starting to understand as this video yeah. is progressing. The, and like, by the way, I remember during ICC, ICC was a massive fucking uh, time period too. Like I remember, I made a here. joke, and so I was, was like, I "You could so. have literally had a kid in the time that just ICC was out as a raid." And my friend, uh, my friend Zach was like, well, actually, yeah, Hayden did. Because we had a friend, and, like, he played WoW with us all the time in Burning Crusade and Wrath. And in, in, in Wrath, I guess, I don't know, like, there's too much of a raid drought. He got bored, and he just started having, yeah, he had a fucking kid, man. He had a kid before Cat even came out. And then the same guy who had the kid went back, and on day one of Cataclysm, got the Realm First Skinning Master. I remember that. Oh, wow. It's the stupidest fucking thing, bro. Like, he... He had like back to back realm first master skinner. Yeah, he was so boring. Yeah, it was so boring. He had sex. Yeah. There's a lot he's of like reasons why people he's like had a married, sour taste in their mouth in regards to cataclysm store. because of so many lackluster things going like on with person. this expansion. It's kind of like the LFG, or rather the LFD, the LFR crap. Mm -hmm. It just has cataclysm you just associate the word with this very sour yeah. time in world of warcraft history a time of controversy a time of boredom but really everything has and just also been... like at the end of cataclysm uh like uh, miss chat which which of the cataclysm dungeons it's one of the hour of twilight dungeons it looks like a fucking warcraft 3 map 
I've, I've only actually done done the dungeon one time. I did it to get the achievement in retail like five years ago. One of them just completely looks like a Warcraft 3. It's like they were using... So I, it is like a fucking Warcraft 3 engine map or something like that. Is it Well of Eternity? Do you guys mind, after the video, I'm going to log into retail. I want to go run through Well of Eternity. Because I remember that dungeon being so fucking weird. So weird. So Pandaria came out I've only done in it September. One time. And in May, I believe, I think it was May, uh, Diablo 3 came out, time, yep. and it was a huge disappointment. A lot of people were really negative about Diablo 3. Leading to this. Yeah, it's true. The seventh point is very simple, and it's just simply the fact that Cataclysm is not really considered WoW classic. No, it's not. It's not considered classic World of Warcraft, the OG Golden Age. So this is kind of my opinion. I think WoW Classic starts with Cataclysm. I think that when I think of WoW Classic, I think that WoW Classic Cataclysm, WoW Classic Mop, and WoW Classic Warlords of Draenor, that's kind of the classic trilogy in my mind. Like that is really where things get going. That's where we, that's like the starting point in my opinion. The era of the that's game. That's what it's all about. Cataclysm is when the game went on full decline. Which is when classic WoW is vanilla, BC, and Wrath, and then Cataclysm isn't classic. It's just not. Well, it's classic shit. Globes began to leave mm -hmm. World of Warcraft. Classically shit. And the reason why the, the the big fundamental reason as to why people do not consider Cataclysm to be classic World because of Warcraft. Because it changed the world fundamentally. WoW they changed such. everything about it, the it, game. It's really subjective, but I yeah. think it boils down to this based on comments that I've seen. Dude, Benji, uh, but 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 Jenny, that's my opinion now too. After having played through vanilla TBC and Wrath, going into Kata, I look back on the entire thing. I really am just a vanilla guy. What I have learned over the last five years, I don't care about TBC. I don't care about Wrath. I really don't care about Kata. I'm gonna be honest. I really only just care about vanilla. Vanilla is just something else. It's the it's the fucking best. It's the best. And I am not a classic Andy. Don't you dare call me a classic Andy. You know what I am? I'm a classic supremacist, okay? Classic WoW is supreme. Classic WoW is the best version. I am a classic supremacist. Let's fucking go. Let's go. I'm on it's number one, baby. I used to I be the guy that would call which like this to simple fact. Cataclysm is a completely different game to the game that came before it was in the events Ooh. of wrath of the lich king if i remember correctly blizzard was purchased yeah but you're still gay i guarantee you i have more children than you by activision silence during, you know Cat you're not even a breeder are you silence blizzard got a completely different design philosophy for cataclysm compared to what they had for vanilla wow tbc and wrath of the lich king and you'll i don't think it was really that much different than like wrath i think it was a lot the same especially like was icc that much different than Firelands in terms of like how the game is designed like obviously the raid's very different but like it's basically the same thing See what I'm talking the about. Systems like I was are talking the same. about it at the yeah, beginning of the video. But when you start playing through the world, you're going to see how. What expansion is it where they start having ground slide mechanics, where the boss either pushes you and makes you slide along the ground, or the boss pulls you and he makes you slide along the ground, and then and then you have to like run in the opposite direction. Is it mop? I hate that mechanic. Whatever, whatever, I think you're right. I think it is, Mop. Ooh, that's, that mechanic is never fun, ever in any rate. Blizzard has nerfed mm -hmm. the social element of World of Warcraft they in did. Cataclysm. You're going to see how there's less group content. There's less of a need for trading with your fellow players. And there's I think the word need is very important because one of the things that, like, WoW did is it caused people to come out of their shell because a lot of people that play, you know, games like this are, like, kind of introverted, you know, not super social, but it caused people to be social because of how rewarding it was. And Cataclysm removed that need less of a community element you're going to see how the world feels more linear it's more boring and dull you're going to see how everything just seems to be designed to just get you on a linear path that takes you to end game as fast cataclysm started at level 85 vanilla wow started at level one this was a problem that blizzard created i would say 
in Burning Crusade. And I think that it was made worse in Wrath. And really, it was just made worse in Kata as well. Fast as possible. That way you can start consuming the new raids and whatever the end game content is. You got to play it to really understand it. For yeah. those of you guys like me who played back in the day, you probably know what I'm talking wow, about. Death but Wing. when Cataclysm Whoa. came out, it felt Spine like a completely different game from the game that we had played it was you know, previously Whoa. in totally Wrath different. of the Lich King TBC and especially vanilla. Cataclysm was a full departure from like the vanilla design philosophy. If you go and watch like the behind the scenes videos of classic World of Warcraft, meaning vanilla WoW, back when Blizzard was developing it back in like yeah. 2003, 2002, and they're talking about that development and what their design philosophy was for the world and questing and leveling up and group content and so on and so forth. Dude, who here remembers the BlizzCon 2005 class design panel where Jeffrey Kaplan gets up on the stage and he was talking about his, he was talking about Blizzard's design philosophy when they were designing every single class, Shaman, Paladin, Warrior. And he gets up on stage and he says, yeah, now we're going to talk about Paladins. We needed a class for retarded people. It is radically different compared to He Catechism. said that, and it's I quote, I think that that's true. It's that's massively true. true. And do you remember yesterday, whenever we watched the video about Baldur's Gate 3 and about how studios need to have people that are working at the studio that have like that massive degree of understanding and, uh, oh, what's the word for it? Like uh, insight and vision. I think that Classic WoW, like if you listen to the guys that made Classic WoW talk about games, it becomes immediately evident that they understand games on a very intimate level. And you don't see people just like randomly talking about that stuff. Like these random game developers that are like, oh, this is the way this is, we're making this game and everything. Like they have an understanding of the way that people play games and the way that people think that makes them world builders and game designers. And those are the people that made Classic WoW. And I think that also- What I'm about to say is 100% truth and fact the best game designers are game designers that were teenagers in the 80s and 90s and then they grew up they got older and they got a job they got into game design and they made the best games ever because these guys if you were a nerd in the 80s and 90s you grew up playing dungeons and dragons magic the gathering like you were a board gamer you were probably you were playing DD after school at your friend's house in the fucking basement okay those guys make some good fucking games and and also when they got into game design late 90s early 2000s it wasn't known that there was a ton of money in that business they were getting these jobs because they were fucking passionate they weren't doing it to get bitches or get a bunch of money or whatever like they were doing it because it's what they fucking loved okay that's why they were getting into that field they were turbo nerds and now this is my generation i'm 30 I know a lot of people like if I was going to high school, it's 2010, 2011, 2012, whatever is when I graduated 2012. The message was, and I'm sure it's even more so now if you're younger than me is like, if you want, you want to make a lot of money, have a kind of a cozy, cushy job. Okay. Learn, learn, learn to code, um, web design, computer programming, uh, video game design. And it's like, th like that is you go into the tech industry because that is cozy job and you make a lot of money. And so I think that, and I'm not trying to hate on anyone, but you have to acknowledge here, I think a lot of the people that are my age that have gotten into the tech field or game design field in the last 10 or 15 years, they've gone into that field because they wanted money, okay? Rather, they're more normies. Rather than they're super autistically passionate about designing the best five-man dungeon player experience they possibly could make, okay? Chat, do you agree? Yes or no? I think there's actually so much truth. And of course, this is not every single person, okay? But it's mu much, much bigger of, an, of a phenomenon today than it was 20 years ago, no doubt, or 25 years ago, no doubt. So if you ask any of them, at least Kevin Jordan said this, <clears throat> he's like, yeah, uh, a lot of the things in Classic WoW, they were really good, but we didn't mean for it to be that good. Dude, speaking of Kevin Jordan, this is so funny. Okay, 
Kevin Jordan, the original class designer. You know what? I actually don't want to name any names. Hey, uh, guys, give me 60 seconds so this doesn't get clipped out of context. Hold up. I need 60 seconds here, please. I don't want to put anyone on blast. Give me 60 seconds. Okay, so I um, happen to know pretty well a guy that used to work at Blizzard in the early days of World of Warcraft. He helped make Vanilla WoW, and he will remain unnamed. And I remember, this is like 2001 or 2002 when all of the State of California sexual soul lawsuit allegation stuff came out. I remember I was talking to him and I said, hey, like, did you see any of that stuff like sexual harassment, cube, cube crawling, breast milk stuff back when you were there in 2004? And you know what he said? He said, no, I know. I genuinely never saw any of that because we didn't have women in the office. There, wa there weren't any women working there. He said when I was there, it was just guys. So like maybe it would have happened, but there were just no women there. No, like not a single woman worked in the office. You know, so you said that's how it used it to a, be. It was an accident. It was a mistake. And it just turned out to be really good. So I think that that's also another good indicator because I think that whenever you're on the right path to something, you will have happy accidents and serendipitous outcomes. And whenever you're not on the right path to something, you'll have setbacks and failures that you could have never predicted for. Now, I think that's, yeah, it's like an intuition. And it's also a lot of psychology to it. Completely different mindset with less of the yeah. community in mind, yeah. with less challenge in mind, with less RPG-ness, adventure, and so on, and just kind of more convenience. More By the way, this boss was fucking insane. It was one of the best bosses Blizzard had ever made. Like, Elisar's Lore was nuts. Ease. Such a good more, point. Uh, like, like, it's kind of like one of the things of Cataclysm. It was like Blizzard wanted to make the game more easy to get into and you know, so easy badass. for a new player to just jump in and fall into Azeroth and you yeah. know get to end game and start oh, you know, wow. PvPing and stuff. And yet it had the exact opposite effect to what yeah. Blizzard intended. People preferred the old world. They preferred... Yep. That's because the developers that made... Like the people that were making decisions at that time... And like even now, I think this is especially true with Retail WoW. They give players what they want, but not what they need. I know it sounds kind of cliche to say, but I think it's true. They focus on responding to what players want and then just giving them what they want. Can I tell you guys something? This was, man, this was the end of Wrath, actually. Not even Cata yet. It's ICC patch. And there was a community of people on my server that were so sick of the way the game was going. This is Wrath of Lich can keep in mind. They made a giant ass level 60 twink guild. And this is 2009. 2009. And I joined this guild and I leveled up a character. And dude, level 60 twinks. And we were going and getting our Dire Mall tribute buffs. You could still get them. We went to uh, Dire Mall to get the Dire Mall tribute buffs. And then we would go and do Molten Core as a group of people at level 60 and we're all twinked and we'd go farm a thunder fury and stuff i remember i killed thunder on with these guys in 2009 and one of them had soul frost it was awesome this was a twink guild in 2009 and i think that like blizzard has had like individual moments of like absolute like sublime genius of like how they solve certain problems in the game but in a general sense i think it's very hard for them to understand like why certain things are successful you remember whenever Season of Discovery was announced and I said that I was very concerned about how these new like specs and everything else will change the game in a way to remove some of the magic out of Classic. 
And like, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Now is Season of Discovery doing that? We don't know yet, right? It's just too early. We'll know in like six months. But overall, I think it is something to be aware of. The old way of doing things. They did not like this very linear quest. Mm -hmm. I could go on and on about this. The point is, I'm just going to end it here. because He's going is really on and on. The point is, is when you play Cataclysm Classic, you will see that it is a huge departure yeah, it's very from like game. what you, you have played HP. before in Wrath of the Lich King and in TBC. I'm sure there's more that, you know, I could have thought of, but, you know, I'm just sitting here. I just got a couple of notes on a piece of paper. I'm just ranting out of my ass at the moment. Maybe I'm getting yeah. some things wrong. I don't know. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below, guys. But this video is just to try to help some of you guys that are sitting there a little confused as to why, you know, why that BlizzCon room, you know, was so dead silent when they were announcing Cataclysm Classic. Because really, no one gives a damn about. Hold up. Now, now I want to see. Um... I want to see this. Uh, okay, hold up. Where where did they... Uh... Oh, yeah, here we go, baby. Here we go. We all boarded Coven Wrath. Earlier this year, we looked at your feedback to think about where are we going to go next? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we read through a lot. And say I've it. seen a lot of your feedback on social media forums, and we sent out surveys to our players. And here... At BlizzCon, we're happy to announce Cataclysm is Okay, so pretty much the dude the, the crowd the crowd went wild. They loved it. They went insane for that. Cataclysm classic <laughs> and Donal. maybe there's some people that do. But Donal. there's to dozens rap, of them. TBC and especially vanilla. It, Thank it you. Nothing. Thank you. It ain't nothing. And that's mm -hmm. the video right there. Holy is shit. Is it really? Yep, there it is. It ain't nothing. I mean, I think that's probably true. I'll link y'all the video. This is a good one. It's an excellent you know Nixium's been streaming recently. I'm glad to see that. I am. I think he was playing hardcore. I hope he's playing Season of Discovery too. Yeah, Nixium's great. I've watched Nixium for it's a nice I don't guy. Know, ten years, something like that. Yeah, there's his video right there. And uh make sure to give it a like. That was great. And uh, I do think that he's right about a lot of the things. And like, you know, with Deathwing and everything, it's like, ah, uh, I actually, as I said, I think the only point that I really do disagree with this was is that I really loved how the end game zones were integrated into old Azeroth. I loved that. That was my favorite part about Cataclysm. Is like you were actually in the old world and it felt like you were playing World of Warcraft again and not Continent of Expansion, which is usually what it sure. is. So sure. I was a huge fan of this. I love this. There you go. That is the... Uh... And that is why nobody is excited 